I never imagined being scared to open a book. They were my best friends growing up. Imagine the irony if this one happens to kill me. Let's keep our spirits high and go for it. Well, that's a... Uh, interesting set of items to find inside of a book. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Stay. I'm your host, the Birdman, known as Falcon. We're back here with chapter number five. If you guys recall from the first video, I can show you up to chapter nine before the release date. After the release, we could do the entire thing from that point on. So I will go up to chapter nine for now. And if you guys enjoyed this, want to see a bit more, let me know in the comments. Let me know by leaving a thumbs up and we will indeed do the rest of the game once it releases fully. In case you're wondering about the game itself, in the description down below, you'll find a link for it in case you want to keep your eyes on it. Um, there's a lot of endings as well, so even though the game's very story-heavy, there's a ton of choices which kind of, like, you know, dictate what type of path you're going to be taking going forward. So right now, we have to continue, I guess, trying to befriend our boy Quinn over here. Sorry for disappearing so abruptly. Digging into the past can be taxing work. It's something I ask so often for my patients, but even for me, it feels like climbing Everest without oxygen. Which would be impossible. Couldn't pass camp, I... Never been the athletic type. So, let's see, the clock is ticking, and also, what's on your mind? Let's see what's on his mind here. That's good, you'll probably remember something that can help you. What's on your mind? Hey, you remembered me. I'm humbled by your attention. But I'm not worthy of it, since you seem to be busier than I. Than a mosquito in a nudist colony. Now, it's weird because the game actually tracks when you're gone from the game itself. So, I haven't played this in like maybe a day since last time I recorded. So, I wonder if that reaction is based on the fact that I was gone for almost an entire day before I came back. It's kind of weird. Uh, I traveled way back thinking about how I treated my patients, like numbers with stereotyped ideas giving cookie cutter treatments, without reflecting that behind all those troubled minds were real worthwhile individuals who had come to me in dire need of help. And I sat there, feigning a sympathetic ear with all my diplomas and certificates behind me shouting how good I was. Now I realize there were, in fact, proof of what an ignorant fraud I was. A veiled charlatan. I deserve to rot in here. Well, he's feeling a bit depressed, I would say, right? Uh, you're being too harsh on yourself, and what worries you? I mean, I think he's being too harsh on himself. I mean, I can't say I've ever been to a psychiatrist, a therapist, or something like that, but... I imagine, like, it's really hard for that sort of profession to, like, get so involved in people's lives. Like, you listen to them, you try to give them advice, right? But can you imagine, like, having to really care about every single person that comes along your couch, let's say, and you're supposed to listen to their problems and talk to them about them? Like, I mean, the therapist himself might go crazy, too. I mean, it's still really asking me. I'm, like, doing the entire looking from the outside in type of thing. But I think he's just being too harsh on himself, to be honest with you. So I'm gonna go with that one. You can't go down that rabbit hole, because you might never come back. You're being too harsh on yourself. Thank you for the red flag warning. Once you start that downward emotional spiral, who knows where you'll end up. It's hard to recognize your negative feelings as just a mental process, and not a definition of your identity. When events trigger upsetting thought that cause negative emotions, it's easy to become overwhelmed by it and reflect the distorted picture of reality. To put it in a nutshell, when you become nuts and just completely lose it. Exactly. You gotta remain calm. So, breathe and relax or escape the room. Let's think about that place as an escape room att attraction. You need to look high and low at every inch of that room. Or breathe and relax, you gotta keep it cool until we figure out something. Let's keep it cool, man. That's a good idea. If you're in the middle of a hot yoga class, <laughs> right now I'm in the middle of some deep hot S. But I do need some stretching. Can't feel my feet in the cold concrete. How are we doing with this guy, by the way? Huh. You know what? I was... This bar was filled up a lot higher last time. I really want to say that me leaving for a while... Made him a bit salty towards me. And, like, I've lost some... He found something. I've lost some, like... Goodwill points with him, too. Huh. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure that bar was very close to the bonding portion. And now we're a complete stranger again. Huh. Alright, well, chapter 5's done. Breathe and relax, 78% said that, and 22% said escape the room. 
The yogis really uses a square breathing technique for everything in life. Amazing. All right. Chapter six. Actum scriptum. So apparently he might have found something. And you're not going to believe it. Not fossilized boogers or chewing gums. Just the key tucked in the side of the table. When you're missing a carpet or a vase to hide keys, why not use the bottom of a table? This doesn't make any sense to hide the key, but to put it in the same room as you? It doesn't, but we don't know. We're not really sure what type of mentality we're, we're playing a game against here. Time to go and leave that hideous place, but keep a tab on warning signs. We don't know what we're facing here. What do you guys think? Have him use that tree to get that key to try to get out, or... I mean, it doesn't make any sense, sure, but... You can't just sit here forever, right? You gotta give it a try. Go give it a try, man. Couldn't agree more. For a split second, I thought all this was over. But then I have you to keep my feet on the ground. But I didn't find the key by chance. I was supposed to find it, and keep following this trail of crumbs. Just hope I don't find a cannibalistic witch on the other side. Be right back. You gave me that Hansel and Gretel thing, huh? Alright. Little kitty cat's over there just licking himself. Alright. So this door in the past... Oh, it actually opened this time. In the past, that door has fallen on him. But that's if you try to force it open. If you use the key, apparently it doesn't fall over. Oh, you know what? Didn't we get to this point in the demo as well? This is all kind of coming back to me now. Yeah, no, we did, right? Because we did the first five chapters with the demo. Hmm. I forgot already. Wait, though, you found a, a shelf over here. No, I did do this. This now is familiar because I believe you're supposed to line this up by moving all the books with the circles over here. All the books with this symbol over here. And then you're supposed to like line it up so it kind of like does this weird pattern. Yeah, I remember this. Okay, uh, let me cut forward and we'll cut back in once I get the right equation here. Okay, and there we go. So we got the infinity thing, and now we just pop this open. That cat worries me a little bit for some reason. Just <laughs> just wandering around, looking at himself. So we got this book with the infinity symbol here. Yeah, I know, I'm pretty sure we did cover this in the press demo. I mean, I have a really terrible memory, so... I forget these things, but I think we got to this point. So after this, whatever happens now... Then I'm rolling blind. Hello, mate. I'm alive. For now. There's another weird room. It appears to be an office with vintage vibes. Some heavy decoration, an upholstered armchair, a fireplace, a library, and some funky statues. So we have found the ancient dead goddess of violent fate, who was known to the Greeks in Homeric times and earlier. Daughter of Nyx, sister of fate, doom, death, and sleep. The Cur statue. Some stuff covered in blankets. I feel like I'm in a creation of Edgar Allan Poe. I keep waiting for an ominous bird to speak to me. Ugh. <laughs> an ominous bird to speak to you? Well, hey, look no further, buddy. You got him right over here. He's been talking to you the entire time. All right, so let's see here. Are you alone? Possible exit or something new? Uh, your kidnapper could be hiding behind that heavy decoration. I don't think... No, let's not say that. I don't want to freak the guy out. Possible exit. First thing first, did you see any possible exit or something new? You have to search every inch of that room. Have you found anything, something new? Well, we got that book, so apparently let's inquire about that and he could tell us about it. Alright. I think that probably should have raised a little bit of our standing with him. A secret book with the infinity symbol on its cover. Equilibrium or the balance of surrounding forces. It doesn't end. It doesn't begin. It simply exists. It looks sacred, but at first glance, it doesn't look like it's related to a particular religion, not even to something satanic. Even so, I'm afraid to open it. Don't do it, it's worthless, or open it. Well, I mean, what's the worst that could come out of you opening a book? I mean, I know we're supposed to be doing the entire, like, saw thing over here, which is kind of what this is going for. But I mean, what's he gonna do, like, open up the books and it blow up on him? It's a freaking book! You gotta open it, man. I'm curious about this. I'm pretty sure all of you guys watching are curious as well, right? I gotta find out what's in there. 
I wouldn't be so sure. You never saw the name of the rose? Or the cook, the thief, his wife, the lover, and the dog? Books can be wielded as seriously potent weapons, figuratively and literally speaking. I don't know. Do you think it's safe? It may just be a book, but what if it's meant to be my final chapter? I mean, you're not wrong, but I think you're probably overanalyzing it a little teeny tiny. It's just a freaking book, right? Better safe than sorry. Just be careful, okay? I mean, would that still get him to open the book? Because I can understand where he's coming from. I do want to, like, support what he's telling me, which is... Yeah, sure, I could see what he's coming from, but I still want to open it. You watch too many movies, it's just a book. <laughs> All right, be careful, but open the freaking book, right? He liked that? Okay, good. See, I wasn't trying to be too scummy about that. I never imagined being scared to open a book. They were my best friends growing up. Imagine the irony if this one happens to kill me. Let's keep our spirits high and go for it. Well, that's uh interesting set of items to find inside of a book. Literally speaking, the book was hiding a weapon. A real one. And an object that looks like a communication device. Which apparently works. Alright, so we got a cell phone. Maybe. We got a gun. I think the answer is very clear here. They want you to kill the cat. Kill the cat and you're out of here. I mean, the cat's got apparently a ticking tie bomber on his neck anyway. Uh, and an object that looks like a communication device, right? From which I'm speaking to you now. Is it working? Can you read me? Oh, he's actually now live streaming through his phone. <laughs> Alright. Cool. Yeah, I can. Yeah, it is kind of cool. No more computer every time I want to talk to you. Should have realized that by... W that the weight didn't come from words contained inside. All the words can be very heavy sometimes. So what am I supposed to do with this? Shoot the sinister bird that will eventually come to perch over the door? Kill the cat and eat it? I'm kidding. I'm not that hungry. Yet. Shoot myself and end it here? No, I don't I don't think you should be shooting yourself. I mean, I made the joke about the cat in jest. I don't want you sh shooting the cat either. Is that a window with like bricks covering it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you're coming out through there. So by the way, in case you're wondering, or you're not really wondering, you didn't see it, but between chapter 4 and 5, there was an interlude just like this as well, where he just walked around the entire area. And that was at the end of the last video, so I didn't show that off. But all he did was just walk around, and he just kind of like sat down, <laughs> pondered things. I don't know, thinking about life in general, considering the situation he's in. But it tells you that as well, leave at your own risk. I'm not sure what that means, so um, when I saw that the first time between chapter 4 and 5, I was like, eh, maybe we should... Not leave, so I didn't. But nothing came out of it, but I still assume that it's all part of the game that we're playing here. Yeah, I don't think you're strong enough to bring down a wall by kicking it and punching it. Now you see that over there? Oh, yeah, go ahead and take a seat. You see that poster back over there? There's one of those by the computer. Yeah, you feel like I'm um, rejoining us over here? Because I'm recording a video over here, buddy. Come on, Quinn. I think you've had enough of a rest. Look, you're falling asleep. Get your ass up and come back over here and um, meet up with us. Oh, he's crying now. <laughs> All right, well, <laughs> sure, maybe we can find that, man. I'd probably be, you know what? I'd be in a worse shape than this guy if I was in a situation like this. I'd probably be completely catatonic. Just be like, yeah, all right, well, this is it. This is how my life ends. He's sleeping, he really is. Alrighty, so, Chapter 7, Dubium. In case you're wondering, he didn't move from there, he just fell asleep and never came back. But now he's gonna chill and just talk to us from that chair. Hey there, back from the dead. Here in dead man's land, no man's land, no land. Swimming amidst my dark, disordered thoughts, I was overwhelmed by a fit and lost consciousness. I had the most unsettling dream that turned five minutes of sleep into an eternity. 
Time's running out. Tell me about it. Well, I mean, as I've mentioned, there is a, a counter around the, the cat's, you know, collar. But, um, hey, let's see about this dream, huh? Oh, you didn't like it too much or what? I'm, okay, fine. Sorry for inquiring about what you brought up. So bizarre, I was in the middle of a huge poppy field. Poppies everywhere. The horizon was literally a thin red line. I had a hat on that I couldn't take off. I looked at the sky. There was this huge vulture, flying in circles, fading in and out of distant clouds. Suddenly, after an uncertain steps, wham splash. A river formed in front of me, dead body bobbing on its surface. I came close and realized that that body, it was me. I violently threw up in shock panic, then looked down and saw nettles raking across my naked feet. And when I woke up, there was a cat scratching at my feet. Analyzing dreams is a powerful tool of better understanding yourself. Um, alright. Well, that is a pretty weird dream. Have you guys ever had dreams where you perish? I've never had a dream where I've perished. Like, I've had dreams where it seems like I'm gonna die, but the moment I'm in the dream going to die, I just instantly wake up. I, I've never been in a dream where I, I literally die. Like, it it's always happens, like, if something's about to happen to me, like, something very violent or grave or whatever, I always wake up. I'm not sure if that's, like, something that's very common, because, you know, I'm a big horror fan, so my first thing is always, like, you know, Nightmare on Elm Street. You know, you, you die in your dreams, you really die, which isn't really the case, but it's just kind of weird how in your dreams, if you die, at least for me, I always instantly wake up. Like, it never gets to the point where I'm done, which is kind of weird. Anyway, just figured i throw that in there. So, um, be objective or listen to yourself. You're starting to lose track of what really matters here. Be objective. Only you can answer those questions, just listen to yourself. Now let's be objective here. We're talking about dreams, it doesn't necessarily mean something bad, right? Oh, before we do that though, let me find out. Hmm. I was hoping that would have been higher, but no. I think leaving really dropped that goodwill points with him. So let's be objective. Okay. I always have been. And maybe that's my biggest problem. I've led my whole life according to very strict goals. Work, family, recognition, money. I achieved all of that. And yet, I lost it all. Why? Because I gave the same amount of importance to every goal. And sacrificed what was important to keep everything balanced. But you know what? You have to make choices in life. You can't have everything. He's not wrong about that. I've been guilty of that myself sometimes too. I try to balance everything and you know, sometimes you just can't balance everything. There's certain things you gotta like put more importance on. You can't achieve everything you want done. So I kind of feel where you're coming from. Life is without objective meaning. Not all of those who wander are lost. I kind of agree with that though. We've got ourselves a Tolkien fan here. <laughs> nice touch. Made me smile in spite of myself. <laughs> oh, was that a Tolkien quote? That actually sounded really good, man. What was that? Was that Gandalf? That was probably Gandalf. Wandering itself can be an important part of a journey, neither a goal nor something necessarily desired, but necessary all the same. And even if one feels lost amidst the winding paths, that's how we will find he will find himself and become the person he seeks. But one has a choice, to take the journey to achieve mastery, or to stay a fool forever. People often say that ignorance and happiness go together. What's the choice here? To be a happy fool, or enlightened absurdist? You know the answer, or accept the guidance? Then you know the answer, buddy. I'm supposed to know it, but I really don't. And being in such an over-the-edge experience has made me realize that there are no right or wrong answers, especially when you don't even know the right question. Deep thought said it, and it was right. But the most important thing is, I want to find out. I will find the right questions. Wow, all this philosophical contemplation left me kaput. Give me a few moments to recover.
All right. Well, that was a very philosophical chapter indeed. Nothing like looking within oneself to get the answers we're looking for, right? So apparently I was along with the big majority as usual about not all those who wander are lost. Uh, apparently a bunch of Tolkien fans out there too, huh? All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up here for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. We'll come back with one more video, which will go up to Chapter 9. And after we're done with that, we will wait for the release. And if you guys do enjoy it, we'll come back and do the rest of the thing then. So let me know in the comments if you are enjoying it. I'll be able to leave a thumbs up, and we will indeed do so. I will catch you next time.